Hi guys, I'm Abby Chisano. I'm an exercise science major and I'm going to debate on how to make great and healthy lifestyle. I'm going to be focusing on the exercise portion and a little bit on uh, fighting obesity. And I know that some of this material might be repetitive, especially for this class, um, but I hope you'll be able to take something out from this. So to start, uh, why do we need a healthier lifestyle and what are the nation's problems? Well, about 82% of adolescents don't get the recommended amount of daily activity. And that's daily activity, that's not exercise. That's talking about gardening, raising leaves, uh, recess maybe, walking to class, like strict daily activity. Um, because of that, one in six children and adolescents are obese. Um, for adults, 82% of adults aren't getting the recommended amount of daily activity. For adults, it's 150 minutes a week. Um, that's about 1% of their week, and they're not able to find time to get that amount of daily activity. And because of that, one in three adults are obese. So this is a huge problem. And I think that on this campus, we're somewhat blind to it because we know obesity exists, but we live in a really healthy community and a really healthy campus. So we don't see those statistics like in our daily lives as much. Um, so for a second, forget the statistics. Raise your hand if you've ever received a free t-shirt and you've never been able to wear it because it's an XXL. Yeah, um, that's a cultural response to obesity. Um, that's an indicator right there that we have a problem. So if we know that there's an issue and we haven't been able to change it, why is that? Well, my dad has this quote that he always used to rant me by, and he said, Abby, if it was easy, everybody would be rich. And that's exactly what's happening. Um, it's easy to live this unhealthy lifestyle. It's easy to not exercise. It's easy to go get fast food because it's cheap and convenient. Um, so that's what we need to change there. And it's like, if you ask somebody, um, why aren't they exercising? Like, why can't you change your lifestyle? Go lose weight. And to them, it's like, we're asking them to climb Everest. Like, it's ridiculous to them. It just seems so out of their reach and something that they're not able to do. So um, how can we change this? To me, this all starts with motivation. Um, we need to motivate people, and that, that's defined as the condition of being eager to act or work. Uh, to me, it means to be inspired, which to be fueled towards something. Um, and motivation is great. It gets you going. So I, I think it's one more thing that is going to take you from motivation to actually changing your entire lifestyle. Um, to take that a step further, uh, that's determination, a quality that makes you continue trying to do or achieve your goal. So you might have motivation, but as soon as you hit an obstacle, you're like, ah, oh, this is getting too hard. Forget it. Well, if you can develop that determination, then you're willing to make those sacrifices and overcome those obstacles. And motivation you can get from external factors. You can get from things and people. But determination is something that you're really going to have to find within yourself. And it's something that we can help each other find within ourselves. So how can we use this tool to achieve a healthier lifestyle? Well, for me, this might sound kind of silly, but we all need to become personal life trainers for each other. We need to help coach and motivate ourselves and each other around us. And these are the five ways that I think we can do that. So the first one is understand the risks and benefits. I'm not really going to go into that in this class because it's all here. We acknowledge that. We know the benefits of exercise. We know the risks of living an unhealthy lifestyle. But for a lot of people, they don't have that information. And we need to provide that to them. We need to give them access. And we need to help them understand what they're doing with their body and with their lives in the future. Uh, the second thing I think is lead by example. We need, this is a huge gap I think that I feel, we need our healthcare educators and providers to lead by example and to walk their talk. Um, I had a gym teacher who didn't necessarily look like she was in great shape, but we knew she ran five repeats every month. And because of that, she got more respect from the students. I had another gym teacher who, I swear that the extent of her exercise was sitting on the stage or pacing as we worked out in gym class. She did not receive that same respect. So I think it's really simple that people will trust you more and they'll take you more seriously if you can embody um, the lifestyle that you're trying to get them to adopt. And I think this is a huge problem in families because, like we said before, one in three adults are obese. That's what the kids have to look up to. Um, so we need to lead by example in other ways and through other means in the community. Uh, the third point I have here is approach everybody differently. We need to understand that everybody is their own individual and everybody responds to different things. Everybody is inspired differently. So, some people might be inspired by images. Some people love the before and after pictures. Some people, it's the stats like I showed in the beginning. Um, other people, it might take a health report, going to the doctor, getting their results, looking at really what's wrong with them and where their life is headed. Um, some people are inspired by other people's stories. 
news stories, ESPN, that kind of stuff. Uh, unfortunately, some people it takes a life changing event. We might not realize they have a problem until they have that heart attack or that stroke, and then that's what turns it around for them. Um, honesty between family and friends, I think that's another way to get to people and inspire people. And um, the other one here was, yeah, present a challenge. There's some people in your life that you know, if you say they can't do something, as soon as you say that, they're going to go out there and do it. So take that to your advantage and use that. And the last thing I have is we need to make it realistic. And I think that goes for a large number of people is, like I said before, they think it's like climbing Everest to change their body and their lifestyle. We need to make it more realistic for them. So the next point I have here is uh, eliminate the negative attitudes. Do you all remember the next slide for this? So can you guys raise your hand if you've ever used one of these excuses for not exercising or not eating right? Yeah, me too. Um, but the thing is that excuses are weak. Um, I promise you that every one of these can be negated. Every excuse that you think you can find where they covered your bases, I promise you can be negated. And we make these excuses because we think that we're making ourselves feel better internally. But I promise you, you use those excuses and you still have that guilt inside you because your body's trying to tell you that you deserve better and you need to treat it better. So um, I have an example. Some of you might have seen this before. Somebody who was able to overcome their excuses and get that motivation to change their life. Um, this guy, he's obviously an obese client. He wanted to go to the gym, work out, and change his lifestyle, but he was too embarrassed. He was embarrassed at his weight and his different experience in the gym. So this is his best friend. He goes with him to the gym every day, and he dresses up in the same ridiculous costume to take the attention off of him working out. Now, that might be an extreme situation that we're probably not all going to use, but it worked for him. He had that motivation to get in the gym, and he just needed some help. And like I said, it's all becoming a personal life trainer. He needs that help and that motivation from a friend to get in there. And hopefully he'll get to the point where he no longer feels embarrassed because I can tell you right now nobody should ever feel embarrassed about your weight going into a gym because you're there for people one thing for your health and your body. And that's all that matters. Um, the people that should be embarrassed are the ones on their couch eating potato chips. Um, so the last point that I have here is we need to make it feasible. We need to understand that um, it's a diet. It's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. I can't stand people that say they're going, oh, I'm going on this five-week diet. It doesn't work like that. My dad did the Atkins diet. It drives you crazy. It's a lifestyle. You need to change your life on a long-term basis, and that's how it has to work out. Um, we need to focus on cheap and healthy solutions. I'm a poor college student. I know that I make about as much as somebody would get for call stamps. That's what I can spend a week on food, and I promise you I'm able to find healthy solutions. The information is out there. You just have to be willing to find it. And uh, lastly, we need to understand that exercise is not a chore. It's a gift. You can't have people waiting until they're in the hospital, they're 800 pounds, they're hooked up to a machine, they literally can't move their bodies, and they realize that, oh, I could have done something about this, maybe exercise wasn't such a bad idea. It's not. Um, and the thing is that you can Google anything. We have access to any information we need. Food, exercise, it's all there. Uh, going back to the excuses, people say they don't have money for a gym membership, they don't have access to a gym, they don't have parks in the area. That's fine, you have a floor, I guarantee you. Use that floor, go online, Google workouts, and you can do the right there. Um, you have every opportunity, though you can't really trust everything on the internet, it's a great starting place. You don't have to immediately head to a personal trainer to get the help that you're looking for. So uh, in conclusion, I hope you can see I'm very passionate about fighting obesity, and I want everybody to realize that it's within their control to do so, and that by taking a few steps, we can help each other um, overcome that. And so I want to leave you with a quote, another one that my dad always used to say, and that is, the longest journey starts with the first step. So I hope that you're getting the courage and the iron to take their first step today. Thank you.